How you doing YouTube? This is Chris Mizo here. I'm here with another video to show you exactly how hot does the Threadripper get running on a deep cool cooler. A 360EX, it does not have full surface coverage of the CPU and I will show that later in this video. Make sure if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you want to join the family, make sure you hit that subscribe button for all the newest videos. It's been a really great PC so far. It's been rendering excellent for everything that I've uh, I've thrown a lot of things at the CPU. I've been using a lot of Premiere Pro. I've been doing Lightroom and it just runs flawlessly. I mean, I love this thing so far. It definitely blows out my old uh, outdated Intel 4790K out the water. So I'm gonna show you some uh, numbers. Actually, this video is gonna be more about the numbers of exactly how hot does an AMD Threadripper get? And now this processor is running at 280 watts. So it's gonna burn, it's gonna get hot, and it could even, uh, could it get hot enough to where it even catches fire? I don't know, but you gotta see, uh, you gotta stay tuned to see exactly what kind of temperatures I'm getting with a AIO, a deep cool 360 EX radiator. I've been thinking about switching it up just to try to get some cooler temps, but we did get an official number from AMD to see exactly how hot can this thing really handle up to. You can see it's currently at 61. Let me touch that again. Currently it's at uh, 61 degrees. The heat set at 61 degrees. It's about 63 degrees uh, Fahrenheit inside of the house. So right now I have Hardware Info 64 open, and now we're going to have Cinebench R20 open to see what kind of numbers we're going to get and what kind of temps we're going to get for this CPU with this Deep Castle 360EX uh, Radiator Deep Cool Cooler. Even though it doesn't have full coverage on the CPU, will it remain cool with the temperatures that I'm expecting to get? Um, at the end of this video soon, I will show you exactly what numbers that should be maxed out for your Threadripper, what kind of numbers you should be expecting. We're gonna run this test for about five minutes to see what kind of numbers that uh, will get pulled up on after running it for five minutes, what kind of temperatures that you should expect. And I'll put this here on the side. I'm gonna put Hardware Info 64 on the side. But uh, as you see here, I'm gonna about to run the test and we're gonna see uh, what kind of numbers we're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna also open up the task manager here and you're gonna see uh, the CPU uh, exactly running at 100% as well as you can see the uh, uptime uh, for the CPU. As you can see down there, it's gonna also have the numbers uh, for uh, exactly how long the computer's been on, as you can see, or the last time it's been restarted, uh, as you can see, it's uh, been up for seven days, three hours, 35 minutes. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's uh, start the test. Alright guys, so it looks like that the bench is finally uh, finished. It looks like it's 59 degrees Celsius and cooling down even further down. And it looks like the maximum temperature it reached was actually only 80 degrees Celsius. And no, the PC did not catch fire, thank God. So now we're going to uh, check out exactly how it's going to do when we run, run this test for about 10 minutes to see exactly how much uh, hotter can this uh, CPU really get. Um, and again, I do have the number that this CPU can max out uh, temp-wise, and um, I'll let you guys know uh, shortly at the end of this video. Just stay tuned, uh, and I'll let you know. So without further ado, let's run this 10-minute test and see exactly what kind of temperatures that we're going to pull out of this CPU. <music> Thank you. 
As you can see, the CPU package has still been uh, reached a max temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, which is really excellent. And it looks like there has not been any thermal throttling, which is really good as well. So far, uh, during the Cinebench 10-minute uh, test, it looks like this AIO has performed excellent, even though it does not have full coverage of the CPU. Now, the very next test is we're going to run a 20-minute test with the same AIO um, to see exactly uh, what kind of numbers we'll get after 20 minutes. Will it exceed 80 degrees Celsius after this test? We'll find out shortly. so now the test is finally over as you can see the cpu package is cooling down it's about um 59 degrees celsius now and it's cooling and it's cooling and it looks like the highest temperature it has reached with the cpu package is about 80 degrees celsius which has been really impressive considering a deep cool 360 millimeter set does not have full coverage on the cpu so that's really impressive and i'm happy to say that this has been really keeping the PC um, pretty decently cool, but uh, hopefully we get better performance. If if I decide to go with a custom water loop to get these temperatures even more cooler, and or uh, get a different AIO uh, that has full coverage of the CPU. The maximum temperatures it says on AMD itself on AMD's website says 95 degrees Celsius, which is really good. It's not like the 68 degrees that was originally posted on here um, before because um, apparently AMD had went on vacation and had not updated the website, which kind of gave a false indication to everybody. So just in case if you ever had to warranty your CPU or if it ever had a problem, you can go onto AMD's website itself and you can see that its max temperatures are 95 degrees Celsius. Um, also, another thing is, again, the CPU runs really hot because of how high the uh, wattage is for the CPU. Um, I'm also going to post down below in the link uh, exactly what radiator uh, that I have if you're interested in taking a look at it. Also, may I add that I have a push and pull configuration on my radiator, so I do have three extra fans on there. Uh, last time I tested this uh, test without uh, the uh, push and pull configuration, I just had a uh, pull configuration to where I was getting um, three Celsius degrees more. So I would get a max temperature of 83 degrees. I should have done the test without the three extra fans to show you exactly um, how uh, the temperatures were uh, just with uh, the stock fans and the stock radiator. But uh, unfortunately, I did not. So I, I shared this test with you guys with the new Corsair ML120 fans. Uh, so I got that push-pull configuration and the maximum temperature I'm getting is about 80 degrees Celsius. Um, and I hope uh, I helped you guys with your answers. I also have a Reddit form uh, down in the description down below, which will help if you are interested in getting a Threadripper. And, it'll, uh, and on that form, it'll tell you the kind of AIOs that they use and also a custom water loop to show you what kind of temperatures that they were pulling in a Cinebench test. Uh, if you're interested in something a little bit different than the deep cool uh, cooler set. I'd like to thank you guys for staying tuned on this video. I really hope you thoroughly enjoyed it. I, hopefully I give you some answers for anybody that was concerned about their Threadripper, if they're getting numbers that are too hot or they felt that were too hot. Um, as you can see, AMD has finally updated their website. Now you get an official statement and also for warranty purposes, if anything ever happens to your Threadripper or your processor, you got the numbers right there. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more to join the fan. I'm thinking of getting another cooler, hopefully uh, something with more full coverage and even probably run even cooler temps 
And again, the ambient temperature is uh, it really varies from where you're from. So if you're in a warmer climate area, it could be uh, it could be running a little bit more hotter than what I'm getting right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.